silly. Here's, here's Diane Sawyer. All right. Diane Sawyer leading her program mm -hmm. last year announcing the new immigration law. Take a look. If a stranger walking down the street or riding the bus does not seem to be a U.S. citizen, is it all right for the police to stop and question him? Well, today the governor of Arizona signed a law that requires police to do just that. But that isn't what the law requires them to do. In fact, the law says the only way uh -huh. that you can stop somebody is as part of a lawful enforcement stop. You can't just say, hey, you're walking down the street exactly as she suggested. It has to be because there's a broken taillight or they're loitering or they're doing something else. Don't you think she should have mentioned that? Sure. Yeah. No, I, I think you're right. I think we should have more full context and more than somewhat lazy, but I don't understand how that's partisan. And you, I don't think you, you don't and think it's partisan to is, bash the uh, Arizona law and to mischaracterize what it did. First of all, if that's a bash, then that is the mildest form of bash. It's a form of subtle misinformation. Let me tell you exactly. Can I give you another example? Let, no. May, let me just no, jump in real quick. No. I, well, no. Just so that, stopping our show. You can you can give me another example when I give you uh, uh, my feeling about the context of what that is. Yesterday, there was the Wiener uh, press conference. Every single one of the 24-hour news networks. 24-hour news networks are built for one thing, and that's 9-11. And the type of, you know, gigantic news event, that the type of apparatus that exists in this building and exists at the other 24 news hours is perfectly suited to cover. In the absence of that, they're not just going to say there's not that much that's urgent or important or conflicted happening today. So we are going to gin up. We are going to uh, bring forth more conflict and more sensationalism because we want you to continue watching us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even when the news doesn't necessarily warrant that type of behavior. So here's my example of what news bias is in my mind. Three networks, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, are going live to the Nancy Pelosi news conference because they are sure, coming on the heels of Anthony Weiner resigning, that she is going to make some sort of incredible statement about, you know, uh, I'm disappointed in Anthony Weiner about it. So they're all locked on it. And the whole time there's hand-wringing. Oh, I can't believe we got to go and, and do this. You know, the American people don't care about this. They care about jobs. They care about the economy. That's what the American people care about. We're about to go live to uh, Speaker Pelosi. She's about to do that. She steps up to the podium and says what? I'm not going to comment about Anthony Weiner. I'm going to Go talk on. about jobs, Go on. and I'm going to talk about the economy. And what did everybody do? Left. So what's your proof again about the partisan agenda and what I do? That's the embarrassment. The embarrassment is that I'm given credibility in this world because of the disappointment that the public has in what the news media does. I don't think not that, because I, don't I think, have an I don't ideological think, I, I don't agenda. Think our viewers are the least bit disappointed with us. I think our viewers think, finally, right. they're getting somebody who tells the other side right. of the story. And one, in, and no, no, in no, no, the no, polls, no. One more, who one is more the example. most consistently misinformed media viewers? The most consistently misinformed? Fox. Fox viewers. Consistently. Can, every poll. Can we talk about your network? <laughs> yes. Can we talk about Comedy yes. Central? Because Be delighted to. Case in point. All right. Did you physically have sex with Tommy Lee? He has a huge <laughs> If he put that thing in front of my face, I wouldn't know whether I should <laughs> it or feed it a peanut. <laughs> it's not exactly Masterpiece Theater you're working for. You're damn right. And I think I am perfectly placed. I think that is my, that is where you're I You're the counterbalance to that. No. Do you I, know that I had to I go through, I it, 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 to prepare for this, I had to prepare... I had to go through episodes of South Park. I had to see Cartman's mom is a slut, parts one and two. Can I tell you something I had about to South look Park, at Reno 911. Can I tell you something about those guys? They are brilliant guys. The South Park guys are brilliant guys, and their ability to satisfy. Well, okay, but the next time you're sitting there haranguing Fox, just remember, that's where you work. No, I, I completely, <laughs> wait, I completely agree with, I don't even know what you're talking about. If, are you suggesting you and I are the same? That's what I'm trying to get my head around. No, I'm I've not suggesting always, we're the same. So why should I, I work I, I, this? I am suggesting place, that there's good stuff and bad stuff. I'm suggesting that there is bias and that you only tell part of the story. Oh, there's no question that I, I don't tell the full story. I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with that. But I don't not tell the full story based on a purely ideological partisan agenda. That's my point. 
My point isn't I think your my agenda, stuff doesn't I, I think stink. think your uh, agenda is more out there, and you're pushing more of an agenda than you pretend to. Uh, I disagree with you. I think that I'm pushing comedy, and my ideological agenda informs it at all times. Now, that agenda or my ideology is at times liberal, at times uh, can lean more conservative, but it's about absurdity. It's about absurdity and it's about corruption. And that is the agenda that we push. It is an anti-corruption, anti-lack uh, uh, of authenticity. It's anti-contrivance. And if I see that more in one area than I do in another, well then, but I will defend every single thing that we put on that show. And I'm not dodging you in any way by suggesting that our main thrust I will is defend, comedic. And that's I will the defend difference. everything that we put on this show. Oh, and, I, and, I, and by the way, how often do you see your show on my show? I don't, I'm, my beef isn't with you. Okay. Here, but I, but I believe you exist as, I think that, that Mr. Ailes has very brilliantly put you on. And I think you're a, a tough interviewer. I think you're a fair interviewer. I think some of the things that... Keep uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to ask oh, you a couple right. of final questions. Right. By you, the way, though, did you really have to watch all those South Parks? Because they yeah, are funny. Well... Okay. Those guys are brilliant. I disagree with you again. Oh, uh, really? Are you, are you disappointed in Barack Obama as president? Uh, yes, I think I am. Do you think he's lived up to his promise to fix the economy? No. I don't know uh, the kind of sway that a president can have on the economy, but do I believe that he's uh, lived up to the promises? No. I think the fundamental disagreement I probably have with this administration is simple, and that is that he came in and said, you can't expect to have a, a, a different result with the same people. That was, in many ways, his seminal campaign focus. And all I see, as far as economic stewardship, are the guys that got us into this mess in the first place. And Geithner and Summers and those guys, and the types of policies that got us in this mess. Honestly. Yeah. Did you, did you watch any of the CNN debate with the Republicans? Mm hmm did you see anybody on that stage who you could envision voting for against Obama? Uh, that debate, to me, focused, you know, is very hard to say, because right now they're still in red meat mode. And so when I see a debate that still focuses so much on, you know, gay marriage and don't ask, don't tell, and the types of things where, you know, I tend to glaze over, and I thought that in general you know, their responses to things in terms of uh, tax cuts being uh, the magic bullet as to what it is. So far, I haven't heard anything that appeals to my sense of, that, that intrigues me politically or uh, uh, in any way uh, that is different. What intrigued me about Obama was a statement that I thought he understood uh, the, the corrosiveness of the system that existed, and I thought he was going to do more to blow that system up. When's the last time you voted for a Republican for president? Uh, for president, H.W. Against Bill Clinton? Uh, no. Against Michael Dukakis? That's right. Really? Mm -hmm. How come? Uh, he seemed like a different... There was an integrity about him that I respected greatly. And there's something about tiny people in helmets. <laughs> but he would have been a great four or eight years as president for you. Dukakis? Right in your wheelhouse. Dukakis. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't, I wasn't a comedian, per se, at that time. But, uh, you know, if that's the barometer of whether or not I'm an ideological warrior, and I'm, I think that's what you're suggesting, is that an ideological warrior is someone uh, that will not vote uh, against party. I mean, again, I'm not exactly sure. I, I assume that part of this is to delegitimize criticism against Fox by suggesting that it's coming from a place of uh, contrived political... I'm just trying political... to understand you. Just is, that, is that really true? Yes. Because here's the thing that surprises me about that. I've existed in this country forever. There have been people like me who satirized the political process and who satirized... What was it that Will Rogers said, you know, how crazy is it when uh, uh, politicians are a joke and comedians are taken seriously? I've existed forever. The box that I exist in has always been around. The change is the box that you guys, you've moved closer to me. But I'd like to know what I'm doing that's really different than what you've seen previously from satirical comedians that work in the political milieu. What, what is different about it that makes you so perplexed?
I'm not. I I'm really not, don't I know. know. I'm not saying I'm perplexed. Well, I'm you're just trying saying, to figure out what no, I am. I, what what I'm, am I? What I'm trying to say mm -hmm. is that all I wanted to do. You make it sound like I'm trying to delegitimize you to defend Fox. That that well, assumes. What is, what that is assumes, the purpose of how you? What is the purpose of trying to? That assumes a, yeah. a kind of. And this is where I think you're wrong, and right. you don't get it. That may be right. Is that there's not a a single marching order. There's not some kind of command. There's not, There's not talking a single point me me memo. I'm well, sitting that here, I disagree with. I am sitting here yeah. talking to John Stewart, and I'm trying to get it, trying to understand you, I'm trying to see whether or not you recognize what, that what I believe is true, there's as right. much bias on the other side as you subscribe to Fox, and why you seem I believe to that, go easy on that. I believe that the counterweight to Fox is attempting to be MS. I, here's what I think, that the mainstream media that you so deride, I also deride but we deride it for very different reasons. I deride the mainstream media because of their focus on sensationalism uh, uh, and conflict. And you deride them because you think they're relentlessly partisan. And I just disagree with that. I think that there is a probably a liberal bias that exists within the media that is because of the medium in, in which it exists. I think that the majority of people working in it probably hold liberal viewpoints. But I don't think that they are as relentlessly activist as the conservative movement that has risen up over the last 40 years. And that movement has decided that they have been victims of uh, a witch hunt. And to some extent, they're right. People on the right are called racist, and they're called things uh, with an ease that I am uncomfortable with, and homophobic and all those other things. And I think that that is uh, absolutely something that they have a real right to be angry about and to feel that they've been vilified for those things. And I've been guilty of doing some of those things myself. I, that, I that, just want to say, because we got to go. Oh, I'm sorry. I accept your Oh, right. really? You just have, yeah, you have to talk to Secretary of Defense Gates? I, Is that really? Oh, I, you probably already did. I forgot. I, I meant it's Sunday. I accept your apology. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for coming on. I'm, do you get me? Well, you know what? Will you come back? We can explore this some more. All right. And we, we validate. Still? <laughs> You're a good man.